Where can we find in ourselves authentic energy to support other people whose distress is palpable and it reflects our own distress to the point that either we have nothing to say to them at all or we fake it. And we don't let people know that we share their distress at that level of hopeless despair that they are having. So I think the first thing we need to do is in the relative anonymity of this moment, admit just how distressed each of us is and to look at the dream world, which most of you, if not all of you, have heard me say over and over again, our dreams come to us ultimately in the service of health and wholeness, both individual and collective. And one of the paradoxical consequences of all of that, counterintuitive consequences, is that the worse the emotional experience of the dream is, the more sure we can be that the information that it has to convey is of particular potential use and value and importance. That the worse the dream is, the announcement is, the more valuable the information that it has to carry it. And that in order to get to that information, we need to free up our imaginations so that we don't experience the paralysis of imagination that is the primary symptom of shadow projection, positive and negative. Uh, certainly those people who are wildly enthusiastic about Trump are aware that he reversed himself on some of the issues that they were most enthusiastic about. Probably the touchstone issue is instituting legal proceedings against Hillary Clinton. And now that he has said that he doesn't, he doesn't plan to do that, they are not concerned. They are not worried about that. And when asked why, they say, well, first of all, maybe he will. They recognize that what he says is not trustworthy. Maybe he will. Maybe he'll come to his senses and go after Hillary again. And even if he doesn't, he says what's on his mind. He says what's in his heart. He does not allow groupthink to limit his expression of what he finds in himself in the moment. And what I'm offering here is the thought that that may be the most valuable gift that he models for us. Creativity in the hands of evil is a profoundly frightening thing, but it does suggest that the only way to counter it is to reach into similar depths and find our own creativity, to work on our own wholeness that is being violated by the projections themselves, both positive and negative. Sooner or later, the bright shadow that's being projected on him by his followers is going to offer them an opportunity to find those positive energies in themselves. I think it's less likely that that will happen at a collective level, but who knows? Another thing I know after five decades of dream work is that all of us are much more deeply connected than it appears to be when we are awake. It's one of the reasons I'm a dream worker. I have now totally convincing evidence that in fact, we exist in relation to whatever kind of placeholder language you want to use. I'm not very fond of using the word God, but that's certainly what a lot of other people do. That we are closer to God understanding that as a placeholder than our seeming separation in the waking world would lead us to believe. And connecting back to that profound source of life, which we all share, 
is one of the most healing things that can happen. And over the centuries, one of the most pervasive and ineradicable metaphors of all of that is alchemy. Alchemy has to do theoretically in the clock and calendar and physical world with transforming base matter into gold. And as a dream worker, I understand base matter is a, is a way of talking about the worst things in our lives. One of the things that Jung discovered in his exploration of medieval and Renaissance alchemy texts is that in the marginalia, a similar story is repeated and repeated. And the marginal notes say, my teacher told me a great secret today. My teacher told me that what is called base matter in this book is not lead. It is my own excrement. And it is symbolically, it is our own excrement, the worst thing in us that we must regularly expel if we hope to remain healthy turning into gold, which is immune to rust and has intrinsic value, a lump of gold covered with mud in the gutter is actually worth the same as the same weight of gold sitting on a green base table in a bank. The, the value of gold is inherent. It can gain in value by the way that it's shaped, but even the most trivial shaping of gold does not impact on its inherent value as a substance, which is a symbolic way of describing communion with that which cannot be spoken. The weasel word I prefer is the divine with a small d. Uh, I'm sure you all have your own workarounds for that problem. You can't be a professional Unitarian Universalist and not have been faced with that problem. I respect all the workarounds. We need to connect to that deep source that unites us all across all the barriers that we imagine separate us. And that as we do that, healing is the result. And I would offer you the thought that anyone who's dreaming about Donald Trump, where Donald Trump appears as a recognizable figure in his or her dreams, is announcing their participation, unconscious participation in the alchemical process. I would also add to those any dreams in which shit appears that shit really at an archetypal level is the symbol of the worst things in our lives. And if we cannot maintain some kind of conscious connection with that which cannot be spoken, with God, with the divine, with the unspeakable, when we are confronted with the worst things in our lives, if the worst things in our lives prevent us from making that connection, then our spiritual progress is limited at very least, if not halted. And that what we must do is to turn the shit of the worst things in our lives, individually and collectively, into a venue where the divine can be encountered. And that whenever anybody does that, it is a recapitulation of the process for which alchemy is a concrete metaphor. A good enough metaphor that all kinds of people got all involved with it and are still involved with it because it works so well symbolically. I find it very useful to offer my DreamWork clients that thought. Uh, not only does it make me feel better, but I have some fairly strong evidence that it makes them feel better as well. The basic principle is 
if a dream is remembered at all, even if it's some skinny fugitive fragment, it is reliable evidence that the dreamer who's doing the remembering is actually capable of creative response to the worst things in his, her, their lives. So even if the dream itself is just an utterly horrifying nightmare, the very fact that it's been remembered is proof positive that something can be done. Again, I can't ask you to take my word for it, but my experience is such that it's the best thing that I have to offer you today. <laughs>